This is the basic lock that officers use to stop or to hold prisoners. They want to get a hold of them, want to make sure they don't run away or do anything crazy. So that's what they do. So I'm going to try it for this. Let's call. So when we create the tech ori, we go in, create the base, and close. And now, if I just raise everything, you can see that Isaac is on his toes. Now it's on the verge of pain. There's no limit of pain here, but Isaac knows that if he's going to do anything, it's, it's, the pain will stop. Right? It'll stop. So now I can take him wherever I want. And I'm safe. And usually we do it with two officers, and that's how we control the prisoner or the, the detainee. Okay, so this whole lock has two pivot uh, points. Okay, one is here, which we need to support and control, and the other one is the elbow. Okay, if, I'll, if I'm gonna take him and I'm gonna push, and there's no support here in the elbow, it's just gonna be a nice rub, but there's no point. But if I'm gonna do this, you can see his reaction. Okay, so when we capture, you have to create a space for this movement down his arm towards our body. Our body needs to support his arm. So it has to be here, here, or here, but in a place where you close it, you create a base. Second one is where we push. If I'll push right here, there's nothing, right? There's no leverage. So we have this whole bone structure here, which we're gonna use as leverage. So the farther I move away from this joint, the more leverage I will get. Now, if I'm gonna do it over here, it's already flexible, but this part is still very solid. So, capturing it and pushing, okay? Now you can see, look at his eyes, what happens? Okay, so it's leverage, base, together, it just works. You can see, his, you can see him rise to resist the pain. Now we can walk with him. Okay. So what's important to know is that some people don't feel pain because they're either super flexible or they might be on drugs or something like that. And so you're not gonna get the pain aspect of it. But that, well, that's why it's also important to really understand the bone structure and bone alignment because that, even though they might not have pain, you can still control their structure. And interestingly enough, I'm using this joint to control his shoulder, spine, and hips. That's my ultimate goal, is to control his shoulder, spine, and hips, but I do it through here. Talking about is that in, in Israel, where they use this for prisoners, prisoners or detainees or any baby to control somebody, security guards could use it, or a bouncer could use it. Yes. If they, you know, because some people don't have, you know, the uh, handcuffs or things like that, so they have to use this as an improv to be able to control somebody. Right, so once again, we're gonna use this, but we're gonna to need to, as Nero was mentioning, there's two points that you gotta focus on. This does nothing unless I, I support it with the elbow, right? So those things are, and we're using it in this beginner variation where we kind of come in here and I'm applying this pressure into my chest. Now I use this, this point here like a gotcha tent or a control point, right? things fit nicely together, like puzzle pieces fit together, right? This is our first gotcha tent. When I come in here, then it just, I capture this, this point here. The next one is the elbow. We have the neck, which we'll do after this, but then I've also got here. This is a gotcha tent where I come in here, right? So all these things combined together create this ability to have a control, right? And you notice that because he's going up on his toes, I know that I've got control of the shoulder, spine, and hips. Right? I can also, instead of having it be here on my sternum here, we talked about this the other day, I can bring it into my elbow pit right here, and then I grab this gotcha tent right here, this little connection point here, and this is easier than to walk with, especially if I'm going to walk backwards. I can control this way, right? So those are the, the, the kind of foundation of being able to control somebody, you know, whether it's a prisoner, detainee, if I'm a bouncer, if I'm a security guard, or something like that, I'm a law enforcement officer. All right, so today we're talking about take ore. Take ore at the basic level is simply a bend of the wrist here and using that typically as a pain compliance. So how are we using that today? 
He's gonna throw a punch. I'm gonna step off and just a flip, right? And I don't even really need to deflect. It's just stepping off and I'm out of the way. I'm putting this up here because I wanna make that contact. It gives me a little control and I wanna feel for this gachi ten right here. Gachi ten basically means a control point, a place where we essentially meet and I can get kind of a grab, right? So I know he's out here. His next movement, he wants to rotate and punch me in the face. Come on back. We know the shoulder is gonna retract and this is coming here. So we don't wanna be here anymore, right? So from the beginning, step off. And as that retracts, I'm gonna walk around. I've got this, I'm gonna tuck it in. You can put it on the chest. You can put it in the shoulder. His arm's a little shorter than mine. So I'm gonna tuck it in the elbow. I'm now behind, I have this control point. As I push down, that's pain, as you can see. And I'm also gonna grab over here, not so much grab, but just this um, gachi ten as well. And I'm gonna take his balance. So now he's not standing straight and I've got this. So from here, if I don't wanna be here anymore or I want him gone, we're just like, okay, we're gonna go to the door. We're walking to the door. And I have control, I have a balance, and I have a pain compliance right here. So, one more time. I'm gonna step off, and I'm gonna follow the retracting side. I'm gonna capture here. I like to tuck it into the elbow. You can, again, tuck it into the armpit, or put it on the chest. Then I'm gonna take this side, I'm gonna take a little balance. When I took that balance, I also put some pressure with my leg here. So I got his lower base going this way and his upper base going this way. And I have his balance. And from there, we just walk wherever we need to go. Or we can set him down if we're done. So we're going to look at getting into Takiori from off of a, off of a punch. He comes in, we're going to sidestep and kind of parry up to the side. And as we do that, we're going to create a little chop right into the floating ribs to cause him to pause momentarily as he as this comes in. So you have this little distraction here. And then that causes a reaction, and you're going to use that reaction, right? Because when you get hit, these are going to, the hands are going to come in, and all that's going to kind of set me up for this next part, which as this comes in, I'm going to take this elbow and guide it straight up and get this as I step on his toes right here to lift him up on. Then I just make this little J and bring him down here and I place the elbow into my, my feet here to create a nice little resting spot. And then I can control him here. I should watch out for the hand, make sure he's not gonna hit me with it. Either way, and I can use that here. I can break it by putting my weight and just pumping down. Oh, here, down here. And then controlling from there. You can also control this way, dropping this knee on the biceps, and you have this double control here, right from there as well. And the thing that I need to worry about next would be this follow-up punch, right? So as I'm over here, this can come up from underneath, which also starts to put me in that right position I need to be to get into here, right? So think about how that kind of doubles as a so one, boom, this could be a night jab, it could be uppercut. One, boom, it could be an uppercut in there. Or we could do the eye jab, boom, reach it up this way, you know, preventing that second punch from coming through. So same thing off of a punch, we're gonna parry, hit under here. Keep in mind, as this hit comes in, this is gonna start to retract. You can also hit from there, which also kind of gets this set up. I, I want to lift this straight up and ideally step on his toes as I do this to keep him elongated, right? And if I need to, I can do, bring him back right in here for the come along and have him follow me easily or drop him, boom, and then take him here like we were before and get him in this, in this position, right? <coughs> So just remember, as this is coming in, you can parry, hit, hit, lift, drop. Right? If you need to, you can easily pick them back up oh, from here as well, if you need to move. 
and keep them as a shield, right, as a human shield. Or if you need to, you know, use them for any other reason, you can move along this way, right? Yeah. So, and once again, bicep control, always very effective. From here, if I need to, I can also turn them around easily be able to control them. And then I've got this here, and I can put this on this here as well. So taking it face up or face down. Right, so this is a good way to control also. So now we're going to go to the inside. We've been going to the outside. The punch, we're slipping to the outside. Now we're going to slip to the inside. So in this one, we want to be just out of range. So, of course, never rely on just your guards. You always want to make sure you're using proper distancing. That you should be just at kissing distance for each one. As I do this, I'm just going to boom, cover here, cover here, slight pressure here. And as this starts to retract, you just follow it and come around this way, and then you can take them in this way. Does that make sense? So, once again, as he moves, you're just going to flow with his movement, right? Coming in here. Coming in here and going back to kind of where we started. Happening, tiny bit of pressure. We breathe when I, once I'm here. I make sure this is guarded wherever this is. And I take my body underneath and take the space towards the weak line. Here's where that top area starts to come in. I'm looking around and seeing what's going on. And as that's happening, it comes back to where we start. So once more, and a little more fluid. One, two. One, two, I bring this here. This is what I'm trying to do is get this and then bring this down so I can bring this into this gut tan or this little nice little spot where everything kind of fits like a puzzle piece together nicely and then I can control it here and have not lots of control, right? So from here, I've also got control here so I can take his balance this way, drop him, and then control him from here. In here in a safer position where he can't reach me. So from here you can drop to here and have good control. And I don't have to put a lot of pressure here. I can just have it light so that, and so you, you see there's no pressure he, either here or here. But if he fights me then I can put it on and I can say okay do you want this or no, right? So just be light, be light. Now we'll do Takiori from a grab and punch. So this is just going to be a lapel grab. And obviously anytime somebody grabs you, right, if you haven't moved already, you've already been punched, right? So you've got to make sure that as that grab comes in, you're already kind of managing distance and kind of shifting off sides because otherwise, you know, you're going to be in trouble. The other thing that you can do from here as you move is you can distract him with the Udashiko right up into, you know, the go right here, the neck hitting this way. And so this is the kind of the setup. My right, hands come here, boom, you're hitting off to the side. This is coming in here, and then you're getting into this position. Right, so you're grabbing this, pulling down and up, and then you've got this, right, and then you're taking it this way. So you're taking it from the opposite arm from what we've been doing all, all night. So you're, now you've got it in the opposite arm, so you can't finish it the same way. It's a little different. So the, dip, the finish is here. You're going to take this up here, and you're going to walk across the front of them. Just take them up this way, right? So you get them up this way, then you pull them down, and then you have them here. And can I use you, Justin, too? You're moving, boom, off this way. So good, now we've got the opposite side. Then you take it this way, and from here, right, same thing. You want to take this up, straight up, to get them on this weak line, and then you step across the front of them this way and it's more of a throw. And then you can finish here. All right. One last time, nice and slow. Grab, move, right? Cover in here. Right, this comes up. And then you take it straight up, and your elbow comes into here. Think about jabbing your elbow right into their, their, the uh, floating ribs there. And it's uh, straight on this side. 
So boom, you're moving right off the bat so you don't get hit. This comes down and up. And think about as you move in, I'm gonna move in across this way. As I do that, I'm really attacking with this elbow into the floating rhythm. Oh. And then you can move up here. And you can back away. Outside. 